sit down video i guess we're back uh today we're going to be reflecting on my sophomore season for cross country and if you didn't check out the freshman video i'll try to insert it here or here somewhere on the screen that was a covid season again we had a covid season this year but this year was different we actually got to have a real fun races and i actually got to go to state again which we'll talk about later in the video but first let's talk about how i even got to that point so i didn't do preseason cross country preseason lasts from at least because of the track ending in june it basically went from basically july 4th all the way to early august I could not do that because, as some of you know, I swim and I did senior zones for swimming. So in that case, I had to miss a good two weeks. Then I went on vacation for like 10 days. So I couldn't really run. So then once I got back, I was thrown into training and I was just working my butt off. And I obviously got to the point where I am now. But now, it's, I guess it paid off. But I could definitely use some more training. Definitely. 100%. If I get out more training over the summer, or at least beforehand, I could probably be a much better runner, which I think is key. I think get it making, like, being like a better runner could potentially be my thing, but it could swimming could also be my thing. I don't know. I am mixed between both. I'm potentially here, or I'm potentially here. So I really don't know. So the start of the season started in August. We basically just trained, and then our first meet was in August. It was 95 degrees, and it was horrible. And it was probably one of the hottest races I've ever ran in. I think the hottest I've ever ran in. And I added like 90 seconds for my PR. I went like 19. It was horrible. So then I was like, oh, okay. It's hot, whatever. Because I started to just give up, which I usually don't do. I usually come back pretty strong and I finish the race strong. So going forward, going into our second meet, we started off... I think, well, the next week it was at Broomfield Commons. Much better day. It was like 80 and partly cloudy. And the race went much better, in my opinion. Uh, I dropped a minute and a half from my time. Last week I went 18 flat, which is at a PR, which I set last year. So I was pretty happy with that. I knew I was already improving from late last season when I was in my prime. And now we had to meet that I've never done before. The fastest meet, one of the biggest meets of the year, Liberty Bell. And the training up to that was good, but we didn't really have a rest day, which is interesting because it's like one of those big meets in like the middle of the season. So if you compare it to swimming, like short course, you go from September to March. Your big early season meet would probably be your mid-season would be December, and then your late season would be February into March. Here, this Liberty Bell should be, I'm going to get your third meet, but it should be one of your earlier meets. It should be a tapered, slight taper meet, and that didn't happen. I still went a 1708, which is a very good personal best. I ran that. The course is fast. I'm like, your net gain is negative. But I thought I had a really good race, placed really well. And I thought results have turned. And now I'm looking towards the future. I am looking in that direction, not that direction. And I'm really happy with that. So training. Eh, like... It was basically the same for COVID, but this time we actually had the entire team. It was much better. The entire team really, like, it motivated a lot of us because last year we were split into cohorts. It was, like, varsity and JV, basically. It was, like, a lot of your varsity guys and girls and on one side, and then your JV girls and boys on the other side training. And they couldn't intermix coaches, so it was really not a fun environment last year. It was still fun and all. It was just not the actual experience. And this year was a much better experience in the training up to that point. It's all like the environment, Liberty Bell, pretty hype. And then we go have a two-week break. We have a nice off week with no running. And I went for a bike ride. And I saw this on my other friend after Liberty Bell. I believe he did a bike ride earlier in September before this. And it actually worked. He did pretty well at the meet. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take that, see if I can transition that into a meet at a harder course at Columbine. And it worked. I tied my, I, ugh, I think I went a second under my PR. I was right at my PR that I said Liberty Bell, which shows I'm still improving. Like I am continuing to pr like improve, like just keep proceeding in my training. And I keep like racing with these tough boys and it, it's fun. Like the environment's fun. If you want to do cross country, join. And I'm just really happy. So next meet, 
was Thornton Invitation. Now we're into October. This is go time. This is a lot of when you're in your prime. October. Mental. And Thornton was actually a... I thought Thornton was going to be horrible. That was my mindset going into this. I actually did not have a, a good mindset. Which is something that maybe cost me a few seconds. But at the same time, I knew we were racing at uh, the rec center down by 112th. Like, like Margaret, or whatever the rec center is. Thornton Invitational, and it had the giant hill. It had two giant hills, but it also had two giant downhills, and your finish was a downhill. So I was like, okay, it should be fine, but I thought the hill was going to kill me since it was in the first mile, but it didn't, and I consistently kept the pace and then finished strong downhill and finished 23rd out of 300-plus runners, and I got to go on stage, receive an award, and first time I've ever actually gotten to get an award for something, and, well, here you go. Uh, let me go grab it real quick. So, this is the ribbon right here. Can't see it. Here it is. Cross country right here. It is a Thornton High School cross country. Or 22nd, sorry. It was 22nd with a time of 16.45. And that is a PR on a course that has... I was in like 20 feet elevation gain to Liberty Bell where it has like 30 and to Columbine where it has like 110. So the course being difficult and all, it just had that downhill. So it really felt like a much easier course at the very end, but I was hurting after the race, which is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to be hurting after a race. And that's like, you have to push through the grit. You have to get through it all, which is really what I did in that race. And now we're heading to leagues. Now this is championship season. This is the prime and now we're getting to the point where we got to start get, getting serious. So league's coming up. It's in the morning, but it was warm that day. It was like 55 degrees. It was pretty warm, but it was still cool enough in the morning to where I still raced pretty well. But at the end of the race, it got really hot. And I went 60.59. It's a six-second ad, but I, I'm going to take that because that course is not as fast as Thornton, which I'm fine with. Like six-second ad on a course that's basically flat you legit start on grass and you go like straight up a hill down and then it's flat along the river back it's basically just a flat race and then you go slightly downhill for the finish slight down like 10 feet like it's like a minor hill and our course in our case it's a minor hill because when we train hills there i guess you call them big boy hills but not this time it was pretty flat and i got 13th and i have another ribbon for that It is right here for my league. I was 12th, not 13th. I keep messing up, man. Sorry, guys. I got 12th. Here's the ribbon. Because a lot of you guys don't believe me, but I got 12th. There it is. I got 12th out of my league, and now I'm going into re regionals. Our team is on the outskirts, and you have to be top four teams, and our team was fifth at the time. We were seated fifth behind all the Fort Collins teams. Pooter, Fort Collins, Fossil, and Rocky. Rocky was the top. They were almost, they're already get guaranteed. And then it's just between Fossil, Collins, and Pooter. And it's regionals. Regionals week. We went to preview the course on a Saturday morning when it was 30 degrees. And it was so worth it. The results were out of this world for that race. I actually PR and went 1645. Sorry. So the Thornton race, sorry, I went 1653. And now I went 1645. At a regional course that is a tough course, running on asphalt through neighborhoods. It's incredible. Like, this was not, I was not looking forward to this course, but I peered by eight seconds. And I finished ninth, which, here's a ribbon. Ninth for this. You can zoom in a little bit. So I got ninth. And I'm actually really proud of that. And our team got fourth. We made it to state. We made the cut. Because if we didn't make the cut, we had to be top 15 runners no matter what. So if you were a top 15 runner category, you were safe. And now, because I got ninth, I was safe. But our team got fourth in front of Pooter. Pooter got knocked out. And the teams going to state from our region were Rocky in first. I believe it's Collins second. Fossil third. Us fourth. And we were right behind Fossil by like two points and Collins by like eight points. So we were right there in it. But Rocky ran away with it. They are one of the best teams in the state. But not in the nation. I'll get to that at state in a moment. So now state. State was looking to be a good race, but the temperatures were 
not looking great. It was supposed to be pretty warm because you were supposed to race at like 10, so still decent conditions. But state didn't... The experience is high, let's just say that. The, the atmosphere is, like, elevated at least 10, 10 times. Like, it's an incredible experience. And if you ever get to make it to state, I would definitely recommend making it. Well, try and make it, but I definitely recommend if you don't go, go with your team. It is a cool experience. Get to cheer on. Like, that atmosphere, like, in the stadium, th this year was incredible. Like, the crowd was roaring. And, after, like, the finish, I was, like, going. Like, I felt the energy. And that energy carried me through in into the stadium. It's a equestrian stadium, and the last is, like, 100 meter sprint in the stadium and I passed like three kids because of that environment but overall that state course is one of the toughest courses in Colorado like you start by going down to the creek up out of the creek uphill so I want you to come out of the creek it's all uphill up a massive hill and then you get to the high point of the race and it's downhill but then you have to go slightly back up and then it's flat the first two miles there you'll usually see a lot of people a lot of crowd a lot of coaches so the energy's there you like it but the next half a mile is one of the loneliest parts of the course, and you start to slow down. So you have to keep pushing through, like your coaches will say, like in a 500 or a race. You gotta push through that last 50, last 25 of an IM, last 100 of a mile. You have to push through, and that's what I did and what everyone else did. You had to push through, get through that part. So when you made the turn back to the creek and along the creek, you could just go, because then you're in the shade and then you're just running with people. And then that part went by really fast. You got back to the creek. You ran through the creek in water. That is the best part of the race, running through a creek with water. And I stepped flat in it, made a splash, and I just gated out of that creek. And then it's straight uphill, past like five kids, and then finished. At mile one, I was 68th, which is like where my seed was. I was seed around 72, so I outperformed by a bit to start. And then I was like, 45th at mile two and then like 37th at the finish which just shows i really i went out um what's the word i went out conservative because that's the goal in this race because the energy is so high everyone's gonna go out fast the fastest dude i think went out in like a 510 in a mile but he then faded and a lot of the guys were right there some of the guys kept going some faded it was just a that course if you go out fast you'll probably fade that last mile or at least pretty good, but then the energy will pick you back up, but you will fade. You will not have the most successful race. But that's where I PR my freshman year, which is crazy. And this year, I went 17.03. I added 18 seconds, which is pretty good. I'm like, on that course, that's still about 55 seconds from last year, so that shows I did improve. So I basically improved about a minute on this season from a 1759 at state last year as a freshman at state to a 1645 at regionals. So I dropped approximately 70 ish seconds, 75 seconds, which is dang good. Like, usually you don't have those big type of drops, but I'm still in the stage of building muscle. So hopefully that can carry into next year. And this year, I think the game changer was my Nike flats. This was the game changer this year, because last year I raced in a training shoe and then i got to the point where i raced in a nike pegasus turbo 2 it's a much lighter shoe you can race in it because it's a light shoe and it feels similar to a flat but not there these are flats these will help you these are like the next step up but if you're really into racing you got to get the nike vapor flies or the alpha flies those are like incredibly light they're made out of what like i really don't want know what they're made of like yeah, search them up online. They're like a crazy fast shoe, but they're also like 250 bucks. Like they are incredibly expensive, which is not what I'm looking for. But in next year is a potential, but I'd probably just get flats because I think the flats really help me and they're so light, light on my feet that I can do a lot with it. So I'm really happy that I made the purchase of flats because at first I didn't think flats were going to work because they were like black. They were burning my feet the first race, so I didn't wear them. I wore my training shoes. And then after that, I was like, I'll try my flats. And they actually helped in the common, Brewfield Commons, second race of the season, but my feet burned. So I was like, all right, li Liberty Bell, they should work, and they did. And then I kept using the flats, and I might use them once, but I'll probably use training shoes. I'm heading to Vegas to do a 5K, but that's for just fun purposes only. But I just want to see like what I can do down at a lower elevation, 
at what, like 2,300 feet. So it should be a little bit easier to breathe. And it's in the morning, it's supposed to be like 45 degrees. So hopefully the conditions there are prime and I get, but the goal is to get out fast because I know that there's gonna be no one there. So the goal is to just get out fast and then see what I can do. But I know the start line's gonna be crazy. Because I know there's two 5Ks in Vegas. We're doing the smaller one because the other one is actually really hard. It's the Hoover Dam Trail. You can go look it up online. It is basically you're running straight up like 200 feet and then straight back down. And because it's on a trail, it's so jam-packed that that race would not be adequate for me. This race is more of a loop that will loop you back and then back around. So we'll loop you and then count up back to the start. So it should be a pretty easy course, like 30 feet elevation gain, which is a lot easier. It's almost similar to, I believe, the league's course, at least elevation-wise, not like the same. You're in a desert. So it's going to be starting at like a lake with some shade. It's going to feel good. You're ready. And then it's going to go into desert and then back. So hopefully I do well at that race, which is coming up whenever you guys see this, which I believe will be Sunday, about four days time on Thanksgiving morning. So I should be really excited for that. So state, I finished 37th. Sixth for sophomores in the entire state for 5A. And I, overall, I think in the state, I'm 15th for sophomores, like in the entire state. So I could potentially win state for 5A. I don't know. Could this video reflect me get, getting first? I might make a video if I get first senior two years from now. I could be a state champion. Crossing the fingers that I can potentially be all state top 10. The goal is to make all state top 10, which would be really cool. And I had no expectations if you flash back. To my freshman year, I had no ex expectations coming into cross country, but now I have massive expectations. So now I'm just reflecting and setting goals. Next year, I'm gonna go to NXR, Nike Cross Country Regionals. In, I believe it's in the Southwest, somewhere in the Southwest, I believe it's in Phoenix, or the one in like the Midwest somewhere. One of those two, because those are the two that are closest to me, or in closest to our school. And, and actually, this weekend we had Three of our runners go to cross-country regionals, and they did phenomenal. It was 80 degrees. It was hot. It was 3.2 miles. It was a long course, but it paid off for them, and they knew how, like, a big meet were. It was a big meet, but now they know how the experience felt for the junior. His name's Brett. He's our fastest runner. He has a shot next season, which is crazy to think about, that he's going there two times in a row. And then two se seniors that went, they get to experience it once, which is incredible. So hopefully I get to experience that next year. Hopefully it's not 80 degrees. That's the goal I want to get next season. And then the goal next year, around 20th in the state. And for my region, I was 15th. So I'd probably want to be top 10. For a region, I finished 9th. So I'd hopefully near top 5, hopefully get around that top 5 area. Like 5th, 6th. If I get that area, I know I'm still improving and be the top. Right now, I'm currently the top sophomore in my region by not by like two seconds there's two other guys that are right there they're really competitive and they're gonna push me so hopefully i can continue to, to thrive and beat those guys out that's the goal and then at state try to get 20th try to be and then in the state try to be for ju juniors fifth try to stay in that spot but get fifth top five for juniors continue to push because some of these guys have already outgrown themselves and now they're just trying to improve endurance muscle I am still improving. Like, I still have a lot to learn. Like, I can still give leg, leg muscles. I'm still growing another two, three inches. Pre that's predicted. Hopefully, I can get that, get more muscle mass, and then I'm ready to race. And I have so many good race tactics that, because I don't like to go out fast. I like to go out nice and controlled unless the pack carries me, like at regionals. I was carried into a pack, and that's what helped me get my PR. I was carried into a pack at the start, and I was with them. And then they faded, and I was in, like, the middle of two packs because I saw them behind me. And then I sped up, caught a few guys, and got ninth. So there's different race tactics to cross-country, but I'm not going to tell you guys mine because that is a little bit of a secret, I think. But if you want to find out, actually, no, you guys won't be able to find out. You'll have to ask me in person if you do cross-country, and maybe I'll t tell you. But the goal next, th those are, like, the goals ne next season. And especially for training... I want to do different routes because we, because at our school we have it's called Greenbelt, which is just like a trail that runs by uh, Veterans Memorial Aquatic Center VMAC that goes to like Colorado Boulevard. We do that a lot. We do a lot of runs along that trail, so I want to diversify. 
So over the past week, I've been doing a couple of runs, trying to see what other routes that we can do to help our coach give us like routes to do thresholds, to do like easy, steady runs, to do long runs, to help us diversify and like be ready for the terrain that's out there instead of doing the same thing every day that's flat, do divert that has hills. So I'm, I'm really excited for next year, but first, it's swimming, and we might have a swimming reflection coming soon. Probably not, but we'll have maybe a swimming goals for high school preview. That, that could be coming in probably January or February. Skiing goals, they're coming soon. That will be probably after Thanksgiving. I'll put those out because I'm not skiing until after Christmas, near New Year's. So I'll put those out probably mid-December. So look for that coming soon. Other than that, thank you, Cross Country. It's been a blast this season. Hope to see you next season. Peace out.